Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Henchman's Story. Um, things are getting a little suspicious, but we, we have an idea what's going on here. Because of her performance in the first battle, Kate's character takes the lead in the others that follow. I can tell she's getting a kick out of it, even if she goes a bit over the top with the descriptions sometimes. It's fun to watch. Sometimes? The only not caught up in Kate's energy is Madame Scorpion, though she was never as enthusiastic as the others. I do notice that her practice smile becomes slightly more strained. After many battles and nearly as many monologues, they raid the capital of Stol Stoltorum and face off against the King of Stoltorum in his throne room. <laughs> Naturally, the King turns out to be Archibald's long-lost brother in disguise. He turns into a dragon and... Yeah, things probably got a little too complicated. Nonetheless, the party manages to whittle away at the dragon's health until he has almost nothing left. The next attack should kill it, and somewhat perfectly, it's Lord Bedlam's turn. Alright boss, this is it. He's got basically no health left, so just pick the spell that you want to finish the fight and watch the show. He's gonna fucking flub it. Excellent! Excellent! At last, Lord Archibald Lightsbane shall have his revenge! What I hesitate. No, oh I can't God. do it. Even for all he has done, I cannot strike down my own brother. A life's bane should never be the bane of another life's bane's life. God <laughs> fucking damn Whoa. it. Wow, that's a great quote, sir. You should write that down. I'd use a coffee mug with that on it. Dave, shut the fuck up. We all know you would, Dave. But anyway, boss, if you don't kill him, what do you do? I cast Cage of Lightning on his beastly form, locking him in place. I'm sorry, my comrades, but this is the best I can do. Someone else must strike the final blow, but I must leave it to fate to decide his... Uh, fate! And by fate, <laughs> I of course mean... You mean the turn order? No, you mean me. Oh, fucking damn it. One by one, everyone turns to look at me. Oh, crap, oh. not again. Okay, sure, just... Give me a second. <sighs> I frowned and flipped through my rulebook. That was surprisingly humble of Lord Bedlam, but I don't know who should go next. Deciding by turn wouldn't be fair, and a role feels wrong under these circumstances. Just pick yourself, Stanley. I'm sure you'll make the right decision. Yeah, I trust you, buddy. Just think. Definitely not, Dave. <sighs> I should give it to Madame Scorpion. Oh, okay. If you guys think that's fair, I'm cool with it. No pressure, Stan. We won't hold a grudge, right? <sighs> Dave murmurs something non-committal and Scorpion lets out a judgmental hmm sound. Mm. Definitely does not sound like grudges are off the table. Oh well, no sense putting All it right. off. The person who gets the first try at dealing the final blow is... <sighs> I feel like we should give it to her. I mean, I'm curious as to what Kate's going to do. Like how over the top she's going to go for that. And I know, but we gave Kate the but first one. Dave would just one. be stupid regardless. Dave, He'd yeah. probably fail. Dave of no, Gwen, he wouldn't Dave. fail. <laughs> Notice that. Death. <laughs> that seems fitting, all things considered. Of course it does. I am the best equipped to handle the matter, after all. <sighs> yeah, okay. If we're being honest, you're the best equipped, period. I noticed a small grunt from Kate's. Everyone's so fucking jealous of each other. And catch her grimacing. I try to offer a look of sympathy, sympathy but what's she expecting me to say? It's true in the most literal sense. Madame yeah. Scorpion's character, Death, or D, as only Lord Bedlam has dared to call her, is as maxed out, yep, as any character could be after a single session of spells and swords. She is absolutely a min-maxer. After the brawl in the tavern, she wasted no time in cracking the safe behind the bar, where she found a magic ring and an enchantment gauntlet, and she never showed, slowed down from there. Now she's got two legendary short swords, magical throwing knives, enough poison to kill an entire fictional population of Stoltorum, not to mention her character's ridiculous statistics. Yep. Abs yep, 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 yep. She went and studied through the entire fucking campaign, knows where to get the items, and knows exactly how to build her stats up to 20 each. I guarantee it. Either that, or she's played this before. She could probably spit on the dragon and kill it at this point, but nevertheless, I pull up my pen and a heavily marked up piece of paper in preparation. First, I imbibe my greater potion of lethality and coat my blades in the poison of everlasting torment. Jesus Next, Christ. I use focus energy to increase my damage and spend a meditation point to reset my turn's actions. Wait, what? I furiously jot down my notes as Scorpion continues to repair, spending every item and skill that she say. Oh my god. Even though I know there's no chance whatsoever the dragon survives even half this, I'm I'm sure I'd be in for much worse if I didn't accurately calculate just how much damage she does in the and process. And shifting to dragon stance will boost my attack even more since we're facing a dragon, and give me one more action. 
lady. Good fucking lord. Does the term overkill mean anything to you? And what do you do with that action? Nothing. I stab him, of course. Oh, uh, okay. Of course. Rolling to stab. Roll a one. Several rolls and a lot of math later. Well, you dealt 7,267 more damage than you needed. Fuck so me! You what are you playing, Pathfinder? Enchanted, focused, yeah. And generally murder-ready short sword into the dragon's skull, it basically disintegrates on the spot. Fucking hell. Well, that reminds me of an ancient dark paladin saying, there's no kill like overkill. Aptly put, well yeah. struck death. You certainly lived up to your name, and then some. I think his very soul must have been shattered. Yeah, great job, ma'am. Are you sure? Uh, uh, Utterly annihilated him? Yes, it was uh, very utterly and uh, a little scary. Yeah, if that's any indication of what she'll do to us. Very scary. Why, thank you, David. That's the nicest thing you've said to me all night. And this time you weren't even brand nosing. And thank you, Stanley, for your gracious performance as our host this evening. I admit, when I first learned that you had turned uh -huh. my office as this, I was quite close to showing you my other office. Ah, the dungeon. Wonderful. Yes. But this has been an amusing experiment. I'm beginning to understand the appeal. How much you want to bet if I didn't give her the final blow, she would have just been fucking furious at all of this. But she got to be the cool final blow death lord, so I'm sure that appealed to her. I blink in stunned silence. My mouth opens to speak, but promptly closes when I can't find the words. Did she just say that she enjoyed playing spells and swords? Did not see that coming. Uh, you're welcome, ma'am. I'm glad you decided to join. Maybe next time... No. Let's not presume, Stanley. Of course. Yes, ma'am. And on that note, that concludes tonight's Spells and Swords adventure. I don't think I've ever gotten that far with a brand new party before. Nice job. You basically just one-shot a campaign. Oh. Yeah. It's over? Well, yeah. You defeated the dragon slash Lord Archibald's long-lost brother, and that's that. Not really much else to do. Nonsense! There's always more to do! The tireless work of Lord Bedlam is never done! Oh no. Or Lord Lifespain, for that matter. Why, I have a whole county to get in order! Oh no, I think he's hooked! Yes, Dan, he's got oh, a whole country God. to worry about. That's plenty. As a squad supervisor, I would know how Dave. tough that is. A country is at least six or seven squads worth of people. Maybe eight! Oh my God. So, you want an epilogue or something? No, we want to keep playing! Uh, an epilogue! That's perfect! I think? Yes, an epilogue will do nicely. The legend of Lord Archibald Lightspain deserves to be wrapped up in grace and applause. <laughs> Wouldn't you all agree? Oh, Yuck. no. After all, a dark paladin's brooding oh my God. never done. It is infinite, like the black pit in the You're gonna be given this choice sword. again. Just do the epilogue, or do the mission for... Oh, no. I have other matters to attend to. But if all of you are staying... Oh, it's okay, ma'am. If you need to take any notes, I could forward them to you in the morning. So eager to be rid of me? You just said you have to leave. No, of course not, ma'am. I was just... Trying to be dutiful, I know. A kind gesture, but misguided. It's not the game I'd be taking notes on, but the players. You just can't <clears throat> enjoy anything, can you? This is how she enjoys things, Jerry. Uh. I glance between the two women for a moment. I feel like I've missed some subtext here. There's been a weird tension between those two all night, but I can't pin it down. They... They either definitely know each other, or Scorpion knows that Kate's a superhero or something. Well, if you're all staying... Probably. I guess we might as well continue from where we left off. Alright, you're all still in the throne room. Well, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> and so we continue on, playing until late into the night. I don't have much of a plan, and there isn't much time to create another sprawling adventure, but no one seems to mind. When Madame Scorpion and Lord Bedlam showed up, I thought things would be awkward and claustrophobic, but it's actually been one of the most more entertaining one-shot SNS sessions I've ever had. Sure, every now and then, there would be very real fear that Scorpion was about to decapitate someone, but hey, that's how this whole henchman thing goes, isn't it? And you know... 
Some nights, it's really not so bad. Couldn't really use that extra cash, though. Issue six! I got a trophy Finite for initiative. Crisis. <laughs> I barely remember collapsing in my bed when I finally got back to my room. I'm pretty sure that I fell asleep as soon as I made contact with the sheets. The game turned out to be surprisingly fun, but it was a lot more work than usual, especially with not one, but two supervillains at the table. Both my brain and my emotions are fried. It led, leads to some weird dreams. By the time my phone wakes me up, Dream Me is running through a shopping mall in the nude, dodging laser blasts from a pack of giant anthropomorphic dice. Well, it's enough to almost make me glad for the interruption, at least until I look at the time. My bedside clock reads 6.10. Oh, definitely not an alarm. At least not one that I set. Someone calling me? I fumble for my phone and peer at the screen as I rub the sleep from my eyes. It's Kate. Begrudgingly, I swipe to the right and hold the phone in my ear. Kate? What the hell are you doing up? I didn't think that Scarlet Ravenblood was a morning person. Yeah, well, even Scarlet would drag her morose butt up for this. Listen, I've got something important to show you. I know we only met a couple days ago, but... She's a hero. It feels like we've been on the same wavelength since the start. You know? Like, we already know each she other. She is a superhero and she's about to tell you. Ugh. Like someone who says they're only looking for Libras and their kindling profile. What? Ignore that. I'm not talking about some what? connection. What? I just like you, Stan. And I think you like me. Oh! <coughs> I oh, God. Tell you before I lose my chance, and I need to do it in person. It's just one of those things you shouldn't do over the phone. I'm a superhero, so, uh, what do you think? Meet me at the door you showed me. Number 1385. Come alone. Hey, slow down. My brain's still in boot-up mode. Let me just tell Dave where I'm going. No, I mean, look, please don't tell anyone, okay? I'm serious. I was joking. Jeez, sorry. She's gonna reveal I'm that she's a sure superhero. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm... Just hurry, okay? It's really important. <sighs> what is the drug deal? <laughs> so you've said, but important how? It's hard to explain. I need to show you. Just please trust me right now. That's oh, is this going to be is she's right. going to break in there, take whatever's inside and leave you? Oh. Kate? Hello? That might be. Shit. Normally I'd blame the cave walls for messing with the Wi Fi, but with all the talk of hurrying, I have a feeling that she just hung up. Where did that come from? Yeah, we've been getting along well, but that was a weird vibe for 6 a.m. phone call. Not even a text, like a sane person. She has to call and wake me up. And combined with how closely she's been following me around, yeah, very weird vibe. If I were if I were the middle of the night, this would feel like a perfect stage for either a heartfelt confession or a heartrending murder if my life feels like changing genres. But at 6 a.m., could be anything. Still, if Kate says it's important, that's good enough for me. I take a moment to rub my eyes and stretch before rolling out of bed. I'm so tired that my first steps are wobbly, so I slap myself a little jump start my system. Come on, man. Get it into gear. I snatch my uniform from the floor and give it a tentative sniff. A little ripe, but not too bad. Mm. Apparently I need to hurry, so it'll have to do. No time for my usual morning routine either, so in lieu of my toothbrush, I rummage around my nightstand for an old tin of mints. Expired eight months ago. Probably still fine. Chewing on my vaguely mint-flavored chalk and still zipping up my uniform, I hurry out the door. I walk through the halls at a brisk pace, completely unimpeded by traffic. This place is practically empty at this time of day, though I at least expected to find one or two diehards patrolling the halls with gusto. The research wing is the same. I don't encounter a single guard on my sh way here. Surely someone was meant to have this shift. This couldn't have anything to do with why Kate called me, right? Finally, I reach my hall. My familiar, lonely hall. Home to my equally lonely door, number 1358, right where I left it. Except this morning. Oh, 1385. Except this morning, my door isn't so lonely. Kate is keeping company, leaning against the adjacent wall. She quickly spots my approach and gives me a wave, though it lacks some of her usual enthusiasm. I return the gesture. Hey, thanks for coming. Yeah. No problem. After all, you said it was important. Several times. Sorry, I had to be sure. <sighs> I know I might have sounded like a crazy person. Alright, so she's either going to reveal that she's a superhero, or she's going to have us help her break in. But I'm not. You know that, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm here, aren't I? So what did you need to tell me? 
Have you decided to quit the henchman business and start brooding full time? If so, I completely support you. Clearly, you brood like a pro. You good? Yeah. Okay. No, bigger than that. Way bigger. I'm actually not sure you'll believe me. So first, I want to show you something. You know the store that you've never opened? Well, we're going to open it. Why? You're gonna stab me in there, aren't you? What? <laughs> no. Why did you think that? Well, you have been following me around a lot. You definitely went out of your way to meet me when we were headed to game night. I don't think I didn't notice. Okay, yeah, that's a little suspect. Fine, I admit it. I've been following you around a little, but not to stab you. I mean, what the hell, man? <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> that's generally the first assumption, right? Like, you, you follow someone yeah, around... I mean, you, really you work cool. with supervillains. I mean, yeah... So. The when first assumption that one of them is going to stab you. To double check. Yeah. That another official piece of veteran wisdom? As official as it gets. Right. Well, we're not getting through this door all that officially, so you may want to stand back. Oh, you're going to blow a hole in it. Hesitantly, I take a few steps back from the door. She's not going to blow it, is she? No, Kate's not touching the door. Instead, her attention is on the keypad, which she's already cracking Moment open. Moment of truth. Kate reaches into her belt and pulls out a small white and blue device. Yeah, she's she's shining, Nova. Yep. Which she plugs in the keypad. <clears throat> After a few moments of fidgeting, it lets out a friendly beep and the door slides open After with a groan. You. Figure you should see it first. Hello, Vivi. Where have hours you been? Of your life you've spent standing right next to it. Wow, polite and pessimistic. This is why we get along. All right, let's see what Lord Bedlam's been hiding. Maybe this is where he stashed all that dog food. I take a deep breath and step inside. What's it gonna be? What? Uh. Well, holy shit, this is a lot bigger than I expected. And what the hell is that? That monolith of a machine can't possibly be a computer, can it? But I don't see what else it could be. There's no visible pipes or mechanisms, just wires, and it looks like it houses circuitry. Getting some serious, I can't let you do that, vibes from this thing. This has been here the whole time? Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> I come in peace. Hopefully, not evil AI person. Please don't sick any robots on me. I'm sorry, it is too late, Stan. Now I must turn you into a cyborg and enslave your mind. Of course. Don't worry, we're still about three decades away from any serious threat of an uprising, and there's a good chance the robots get too distracted by social media to actually overthrow the government. The sad part is that's probably, probably true. Probably accurate. That is probably true. They'll just get, they'll fucking discover TikTok and then just derail everything so this huge housing and all the circuitry inside it are going to be dedicated to posting gifts at that size i bet it could just make a few thousand of them as easily as searching for one. Oh no by then we'll be living in a post gift society it'll be holograms or astral projections or whatever astral projection right, right, but will we still have statements <laughs> punctuated by clapping emojis uh, like all those oh yes jay i'm just gonna astral project a, a shit post into your mind <laughs> Humans are an inferior life form, period. But tragically, I could never make any 15 second dancing videos. Alas, I have no legs. And I must And meme. I must meme. Oh. Wow, and I have I must I have no mouth and I must I have scream no mouth reference. and I must scream reference. Holy shit, what a fucking wild one. <laughs> oh god, we need more sleep. So much more sleep. But seriously. Robot uprising aside. Yeah, why the fuck are we in here? Is this why you were so curious about? Why is there a number five on that tube on the know right? This was in here. You see it? Yeah. Huh. Sort of. I think that's I inside and not on it. In here, Maybe. Not this exactly. I didn't think they had enough time to set a unit like this up. But Scorpion and Bedlam must have been working together for longer than anyone thought. Oh, that's great. So this machine is Scorpion's? I guess that makes sense. <clears throat> Lord Bedlam isn't exactly at the cutting edge when it comes to technology. But what did she put it here for? And that's where things get complicated? Think, what do you know about Madame Scorpion? Outside of the whole assassin thing. What are her skills? Her interests? Technology. She was Bedlam's partner on that job Wednesday, right? She showed up personally for it. Even intervened. And what was she after? I don't know. Data. Not really sure what kind, but it was a private tech company. No weapons, no financials. I never really figured out anything more specific than that. And her business, the Scorpion Group. They've got this new Henchcan app, right? Others too. And how do apps identify, recruit, and monetize users? Data. Oh, fuck. 
We're part of the algorithm, M. God damn it. There's no hey, there's no hope for us. The private kind that companies aren't technically supposed to keep, but always do. Yeah, of course they do. And then it gets leaked and they're like, oh, we're sorry, we promise it won't happen again. And then they just Oh, do we it didn't again. mean to keep that. Oh no, no, sorry, here's here's a few million. Just uh ignore this and let's keep doing it. <clears throat> anyway, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you later. Adios.